indeed. So rather than finding Ribbon and her little ones at the hyena den, look who's sitting here. Little Shongile. So she was sitting right at the termite mound where the den is. I think she maybe was having a little investigation as to what's going on and has just popped up to this little tree just to look around. And isn't she spectacular? So it's really good to see her. And now she's going further up the tree. She's going to be really pretty. Now, I think I'm going to just try and reposition ourselves slightly because we've got lots of branches in the way. So just give me two seconds to reposition. But isn't this amazing? Now she needs to be very careful because this is not the great place for a leopard to be sitting. Um, at the end of the day, she shouldn't really be close to a hyena den because if Ruben comes back and finds this leopard close to her little ones, it's exactly what we were talking about earlier in that we were saying that she's going to have a lot of issues um, with predators and if she sees predators, she might move the little ones. Now, Shongile being here might trigger this hyena to then take her little ones away and move them somewhere else so it's not an ideal thing for ribbon but it's also not ideal for shungile because she's quite small and a hyena of ribbon size would definitely be able to cause a few issues for little shungile so she needs to be a little bit careful with what's going on look at that big yawn good morning girl and isn't that the most beautiful pose And I'm sure she's still on the look for look out for Karula, and that's why she's moving all these areas, trying to find her mom and her brother. But she is absolutely beautiful, and she's looking in good condition, considering that she's been on her own and she's having to fend for herself. And she's still a young girl that's not exactly very big. She's looking absolutely beautiful, and she doesn't look like she's too too thin. So she looks like she's doing just fine. I'm sure she's feeding off small little things at the moment. So she'll be going after probably um, those terrapins and varying other small animals that she can then feed on. And look at that. She's now found herself a perfect spot up at the top. It's not ideal for us because of the view, but it is really, really pretty for her. I would imagine she can see quite far from there. She's got a nice view of the sunrise. So clever girl. So literally, you're wondering if Tingana would hurt Shungile if they met. No, I don't think so. I think Tingana has been seen with Shungile and Osana a few times, and he'll know who Shungile is through the scent that she leaves behind. He'll know that this is one of his offspring and one of Karula's cubs, and so in all likelihood, no, he wouldn't, unless there's possibly a food item and Shungile gets a bit brave and tries to defend her carcass from um, Tingana, then maybe he might sort of lash out at her and... Um, potentially hurt her but I don't think so I think she would probably in all likelihood Tingana would just sort of take the kill and then carry on but he knows that this is one of his offspring I mean he's spent time with them before so I don't think he's going to worry too much now I'm just trying to get into a position where we don't have a massive branch in front of us and it seems like that's going to be a little bit better Craig is that better for you yes I think so and this is such a beautiful tree that she's sitting in like I say if one of the hyenas had to come in here they're going to be very very surprised if ribbon had to rock up and see this leopard sitting over the tree and it's going to be dangerous for those little babies because if they had to come out shungile is much bigger than one of the hyena cubs and would definitely be able to pull out one of those cubs out of the hole so maybe why she's up here maybe she's heard something in there and she's sort of thinking that it could be warthogs or and sort of it's now sitting and watching and hoping that they come out and she can then potentially hunt them but isn't that spectacular? Oh, hello, Marco. David, I'm sure she can. She came from the hole of the den itself, so I'm sure she can smell those cubs, and she knows that there's little ones around here. Um, whether or not she's experienced enough to know that she should can take advantage and potentially hunt them, I'm not quite sure. You know, she's a young girl, and she's had very little exposure to hyenas, because remember, in her sort of formative years as she's grown up, there actually hasn't been too many hyenas around here, so she hasn't had that much experience. So I don't know if she would even perceive them as a threat or as food items. So it'll be interesting to see what her behavior is from the tree now, whether she moves on or if she actually sits here and just watches this mound all day long. 
It seems like she's going to come down now or not. Maybe she's going to just find herself a better spot to lie down. And isn't that spectacular? Absolutely magnificent. There's always something about a leopard sitting in a tree that just really kind of makes you takes your breath away and makes you sort of appreciate the beauty of them as well as the sort of niche that they have and the ability to be able to um, go up into these trees and and sort of with the size that they have spend time and be so at home up there is quite incredible she's just watching over so there's a couple of other vehicles that are joining us this morning that are from the commercial lodges so we've got Rexon and Rolf that are coming and they're all enjoying this beautiful view of Shongile. You can see she's almost watching them too. It's I think a case of who's watching who at this stage. And those sort of grey clouds also add a bit of a mood to the whole scene as well. It's not just a blue sky behind her, it's sort of these grey appearance. It's very, very pretty. And I don't think she's going to be up there for too much longer. She's still looking around. I think she in all likelihood is probably going to get up and move and come down the tree. And this is what leopards will often do is they often utilize fallen over trees like this just to be able to see what's going on around them and just be able to spot anything. As fanatic, you're wondering, would a female leopard adopt a orphan? So if potentially Krula was dead, would somebody like Tundi or Shadow adopt them? Well, it's not unheard of. It has happened. So I know on Mala Mala it did happen, where a female adopted a two young males. But it's very, very, very seldom. Most of the time, females have the urge to breed themselves. So they're not going to want to look after somebody else's young. They're going to try and have their own cubs and try and get their bloodline to go forward. Also, it's because you'll find that female territories generally are quite sort of se separated and it's very seldom that a cub is going to wander into another female's territory. Um, they tend to stay in the heart of their territories when they're lost and so it's very very seldom that you're going to find a cub coming across an adult female that doesn't potentially have cubs at the time. If they do have cubs, so let's say in the case of both Shadow and Tundi who have both got cubs at the moment, they're going to see this young leopard as a threat and they will then potentially attack her. So it's very 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 unlikely that they would adopt an orphan but it has happened I know like I say on Mala Mala it did happen a few years ago where a two male leopards were adopted by a female but it is very uncommon but isn't that spectacular look at that you're looking very pretty Michael very regal this morning <laughs> 